Okay, what is Spike Lee, AOC, Jesse Smollett, and ill-mannered teens tell us about modern-day liberalism? Answer, a heck of a lot. Now, let's start with Spike Lee. The iconic director is worth millions. I mean, he's made millions. He's done really well. Over 30 years, though, he's nominated no fewer than five times for an Academy Award. But until last night, he had never won an Oscar. But he took home the award for adapting the screenplay for his movie, Black Klansman. But rather than showing humility and gratitude, he spiked the moment with a tiresome political diatribe. The 2020 presidential election is around the corner. Let's all mobilize. Let's all be on the right side of history. Make the, make the moral choice between love versus hate. Let's do the right thing. You know I had to get that in there. Number one, lame that after all these years he couldn't memorize his lines. Number two, lame that he couldn't accept the honor without gratuitous cursing, which you couldn't even hear because the Oscars had to bleep him. Number three, disagreeing with your political vision, Spike, doesn't make you immoral or a bad person. Now, like I've said before, liberals are angry sometimes, even when they should be happy. And most are off the charts intolerant and judgmental of people who don't think like they do. And Lee, just like uh, in his latest film, suffers from kind of a deficit of both subtlety and grace. Perhaps not surprisingly, the president couldn't resist lobbing a post-Oscars response, tweeting, be nice if Spike Lee could read his notes, or better yet, not have to use notes at all when doing his racist hit on your president, who's done more for African Americans, criminal justice reform, lowest unemployment in years, in history, tax cuts, etc., than almost any other prez. Well, beyond politics, which shouldn't have been a part of Hollywood's big night anyway, Spike Lee's performance lacks some grace. I, don't, I think to regular people, he just came across as kind of bratty, rude, self-absorbed, and egotist, masquerading, though, as a brilliant social justice warrior. The old Spike Lee, got to go back like 30, 35 years, was at least kind of cutting edge. And I have a question. Should we judge him for some of his old movie lines? Like this one, when describing a girl he had <clears throat> relations with? What about Nola Darling? What do you want to know? I thought she was a freak. You know, freaky dicky. You asked why I can say to see her? She looked like a retard? I'm not crazy. Well, but this craziness goes way beyond Spike Lee. It's the same arrogant, self-important thinking that propelled Empire star Jesse Smollett into believing he could stage an anti-MAGA hoax and then conclude that he'd emerge as a hero. Making a scene and casting yourself as the wounded martyr is what these elites do best. You see, when you're on the right side of history, it's your duty to start a national conversation and inject yourself into the middle of it. Facts? Ah, they're irrelevant, kind of passe. As the famed political philosopher Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez once observed, there's a lot of people more concerned about being precisely, factually, and semantically correct than about being morally right. Well, like most of today's social justice warriors, AOC truly believes she is always morally right. And that notion entitles her to be one of the leaders of not the Me Too movement, but the Me, Me, Me movement. She's been on the job for exactly two months, and you would swear her Green New Deal is a second Declaration of Independence. I just introduced Green New Deal two weeks ago, and it's creating all of this conversation. Why? Because no one else has even tried. So people are like, oh, it's unrealistic. Oh, it's vague. Oh, it doesn't address this little minute thing. And I'm like, you try. <laughs> you do it. Because you're not. Because you're not. So until you do it, I'm the boss. That's How about right. that? I know you didn't. I mean, she's like 25, 29 years old, and she's like the boss of Congress. And it's like, totally, it must be nice. But what she lacks in experience, she's excited. It's kind of good she's in there in the mix. She lacks kind of perspective, too, but she makes up for all of it in ego and confidence. Got to give her that. But her demands, they seem familiar. I want the world. I want the whole world. 
I want to lock it all up in my pocket. It's my bar of chocolate. Give it to me now. Well, Acosta Cortez's allergy to protocol combined with her I want it now mentality is the byproduct of the byproduct of the everyone gets a trophy era in which she was raised, where coddled kids grow up to be entitled adults. Who needs manners and decorum when you've just been rewarded for speaking your truth? You always have to hit your hit your chest when you say it. speaking your truth whenever and wherever you want. When adults indulge youngsters, we get shallow thinkers. And by the way, this entire notion of speaking your truth is goofy because it presupposes that there really is no objective truth. Your truth isn't necessarily the truth, and it's probably just your opinion. And you're entitled to have it. Uh, but until you've lived, fallen, and failed, it's probably fairly uninformed, even if it's entertaining and highly energetic. You're entitled to speak all you'd like. Of course, First Amendment, everybody has entitled to an opinion, but no one is obligated to listen to you. And whether you're an overrated director, a minor TV actor, or Vogue's congressional it girl, none of it matters. And that goes, by the way, for rude middle school and high school students who are coached to get in the face of adults on Capitol Hill and just, like, talk to them like they're their, their contemporaries, their Instagram buddies. What am I talking about? Well, on Friday, Senator Dianne Feinstein was confronted by a group of AOC mini-me's lobbying for the Green New Deal, Natch, in her office. Check out this exchange. Some scientists have said that we have 12 years to turn this around. Well, it's not going to get turned around in 10 years. What we can do Senator, if is this put doesn't get turned around in 10 years, you're looking at the faces of the people who are going to be living with you. Yes, the government is supposed to be for the people and by the people. I've been doing this for 30 years. I know what I'm doing. You come in here and you say it has to be my way or the highway. I don't respond to that. I know what I'm doing. So, you know, maybe people should listen a little bit. We're the people who voted you. You're supposed to listen to us. That's your, How old are your you job. How old I'm are 16. You? I well, can't you didn't vote. vote for me. Well, this may have been Feinstein's finest hour. Well, she was forced to deal with the immature militant activists that her party is churning out by the thousands. Activists who usually confront and then try to embarrass Republicans. Again, the blame isn't with the kids. They're, they're students. It's with their parents. Or is that their teacher? Let's face it. If there was no cell phones recording every word, how many would even be there? So many people today, they crave attention. They want to have their moment. I understand. And Spike Lee and AOC and these activist tots should take note. Making a scene and posting it on social may feel good, but it's no substitute for accomplishment or hard work. Whether you're a liberal or a conservative or something in between, just try listening to the opposing view, then sharpening your arguments. No matter how much you virtue signal, harassing people isn't a talent. It's just lazy. And in the end, lazy is just boring, and it rarely wins. And that's the angle.